There are many strategies for assembling synthon or gene-like DNAs into larger molecules. In PCR-based methods, DNAs are stitched together into full-length products through polymerase-based reactions. The most basic of these techniques is sewing. In sewing, there are two rounds of PCR. The first step is a conventional PCR to generate double-stranded linear products. In the second step, several of these linear products are combined with two external oligonucleotides and the fragments assemble into a full-length product through PCR. For this to happen, the linear products generated in the first step must share homology to one another on their termini. In the example shown, we have two such fragments in pink and in green. Typically, the fragments share 20 to 40 base pairs of exact homology to one another on their ends. During the assembly reaction, first the DNAs are denatured, resulting in single-stranded products. Though there are multiple ways these strands can re-anneal to one another, only a few of these configurations result in a duplex with a recessed 3' end. One of these duplexes results from annealing of strands of two template PCR products. The polymerase can extend that duplex to the full-length double-stranded product. This full-length product can then undergo exponential amplification with the two supplied oligos in PCR. In this example, there are only two template fragments being joined together. But this procedure is robust to up to at least four fragments. One of the more popular uses of sewing is the introduction of multiple mutations into various sites of a gene. Suppose you wish to introduce three mutations, designated by red X's, into a sequence. First, you would identify regions 20 to 40 base pairs in length flanking the mutation to serve as the annealing region during assembly. I highlight those in pink. You would then perform PCR to construct fragments of the full sequence that each contain this homology region on their ends along with the mutation. Finally, finally, these four fragments are combined in a sewing reaction to generate the desired product containing all three mutations. All the PCR-based assembly methods are based on the introduction of homology arms on adjacent DNAs. These DNAs are then assembled based on homology to one another. The differences between techniques are due to the specific enzymes and the mechanism of assembly. SLIC was an influential technique in the field for several years that is based on the same reaction as ligase-independent cloning. The individual cassettes to be joined by assembly are generated with homology ends by PCR. These ends are then treated with T4DNA polymerase, which provides exoactivity that will partially degrade the ends, resulting in long single-stranded stretches. Several of these ends can then be joined together in vitro, and the nixed are repaired in vivo. This methodology can be used to assemble more DNAs than a sewing reaction can handle. Typically, the homology arms are more like 40 base pairs than 20 base pairs, but other than this, the design of a slick experiment is the same as every other PCR assembly method. Though multiple DNAs are being joined together, there is no ligase employed in vitro. The assembly is based on homology and the stabilization of the NIC complex by RecA protein. The NICs in the DNA are repaired inside the cell after transformation. The Gibson method is a highly popular and actively used method. From a design perspective, a Gibson cloning experiment is the same as SLIC involving 40 base pairs of homology between fragments. The method involves a cocktail of purified enzymes containing T5 exonuclease, fusion polymerase, and TAC ligase in a special buffer. All these reagents are combined along with the DNA fragments and incubated at 50 degrees. The T5 exonuclease activity will partially degrade the end of the DNA, generating single-stranded overhangs of arbitrary length. Two such ends with homology to one another can kneel, and a polymerase can fill in the gaps between the junction. This results in a NIC DNA with no gaps, and these gaps can be sealed with TAC ligase. The advantages of Gibson are primarily that it is fast and automatable. Like all PCR methods, it requires the purchase of oligos specific to each junction, and this takes around 24 hours and $10 per junction. But after that, the remaining steps can all be implemented in one day. Additionally, the methodology can handle very large sequences, such as 25 KB fragments. And in fact, this methodology is best used on larger sequences. Short parts under 200 base pairs often get degraded under the conditions of the experiment. Gibson is currently the most popular method because it is fast and more reliable than others, and its drawbacks are those common to all PCR methods. 
The reactions are less reliable, less reliable than cut and paste procedures, and thus a fabrication strategy sometimes must be redesigned. The use of PCR can introduce mutations, and thus the constructs must be confirmed by sequencing. With repetitive sequences, there can be deletions, and thus not all sequences are amenable to the reaction. Finally, PCR methods are more expensive than BioBrick or MoClo style methods because they require custom oligos for each assembly junction. Dan Gibson, of Gibson Reaction fame, has also extensively developed yeast-based in vivo recombination. The design of the fragments for the assembly reaction is no different than with the other methods employing 40 base pairs or more homology between the fragments, and the fragments are constructed from parallel PCR reactions. The mix of fragments is then introduced into yeast, B. subtilis, or lambda red expressing E. coli, wherein they undergo homologous recombination. Yeast homologous recombination is currently claimed to be the most robust homology-based assembly method. Its main drawback is that it employs cells which slow the process down somewhat. To use yeast, you must wait for yeast to grow, which takes longer than E. coli. There are a variety of other assembly methods that may be useful during the fabrication of difficult sequences that employ type 2S enzymes. BSA1, shown here, binds to a 6 base pair sequence, then reaches over and generates a 4 base pair sticky end. In ligation PCR, the DNA fragments are designed with BSA1 restriction sites flanking a 4 base pair region that will become the junction. Upon digestion, the restriction site is cut off, leaving behind the 4 base pair compatible cohesive ends. Two fragments can thus be ligated together. The full-length product is then selectively amplified by PCR with externally priming oligos. The Golden Gate method is a popular one-pot assembly method that employs type 2S restriction enzymes. A different four base pair overhang is chosen for each junction by inclusion in a vector set. Each vector contains the BSA1 sites, and each fragment to be assembled is constructed as a Golden Gate part in one of these vectors. The various part-containing plasmids are mixed together in a reaction containing BSA1 and T4 ligase. Since all the overhangs are designed to be unique, there is only one way for the fragments to assemble into a transformable product. Golden Gate cloning is a good compromise between PCR and BioBrick-based methods. Unlike BioBrick, you can't arbitrarily rearrange the parts without making new parts, but you can have many parts that belong to bins, and you can permute within these bins. For example, suppose you have a three-step biosynthetic pathway, and there are five choices of enzyme for each step. If you design each step of the pathway as a bin, flanked by the same pair of sticky ends, then any of the 125 possible combinatorial variants can be composed out of only 15 Golden Gate parts. Thus, like BioBrick, Golden Gate typically involves two rounds of cloning, one step to produce basic parts and another to assemble them. The assembly reaction itself is very cheap and robust. Though one needs to purchase oligos to make the basic parts, no further oligos are required to do assembly. Additionally, after sequence confirmation of the basic parts, there is no further PCR and thus it is unlikely to pick up additional mutations during assembly.